Hello everyone, this is Dude Blender, and let's jump right in. This exercise will help you to become more confident around geometry nodes. It's very simple and beginner friendly, yet extremely powerful, and you'll be able to apply this technique to many different projects. Try to watch it all the way through, as I'll be giving tips and tricks that are super important throughout the video. The hardest part about geometry nodes is learning how to think and organize your thought process. The second thing is learning where to find the node that you need. We'll be focusing on both in this tutorial. Two of the most useful applications of geometry nodes are modifying the geometries and placing instances of an object on a mesh, so we'll apply both by making this field of trees. The first thing we'll do is an object to instance in our field. As this is not a modeling tutorial, I'll just make an extremely simple tree with a cylinder and a cone, but you can do whatever object you want. I will add simple materials to the log and the leaves, rename this mesh so that it's easy to find. Now add a plane. From this point on, everything will be done with geometry nodes. Go to the geometry nodes workspace. Yours might look different than mine as I prefer the horizontal division, but you just need to have a 3D viewport and a geometry node editor in any layout you prefer. With the plane selected, click on new to create a new node tree. If this is your first time ever using geometry nodes, try pausing the video and writing on a piece of paper or in your computer every instruction you need to give Blender to turn this plane into a field with mountains and valleys. This will really help you start tuning your thought process. Pause now if you want. So for me, these are the instructions. Resize the plane, subdivide the plane, change the height of each vertex randomly. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. You need to memorize Shift A to bring up the menu. Here you'll find every geometry node that you can use organized by categories. For our first three nodes, we'll be using the geometry and mesh categories only. Resizing a plane is one of the three transformations we can do, the other two being rotating and translating, so we'll use the transform geometry node. Go to geometry, operations, transform geometry. Play Place it between the group input and group output nodes. Blender will try to connect the nodes correctly, but you can also connect them by hand. If you connect something by mistake, then control right click and drag throughout the connection you want to cut. For now, just note that the connectors and the lines are of the same color and that there are connectors with other different colors. You can transform the geometry by modifying these values, so go ahead and try it. I will just scale in the x and y axes by 4. Next we subdivide the mesh. Since this is a mesh operation, shift and go to Mesh Operations Subdivide Mesh and place the node after the first one. Keep in mind that this operation subdivides by 2 each iteration, so the number of subdivisions you'll have is 2 to the power of level. I'll subdivide it by 4 to get 16 divisions. Next, we change the height of each vertex. To do this, we need to read the information of each vertex, specifically their position, then add a random number to the Z direction, then write or set this number as the new position. This is why training your brain to think in specific steps or instructions is so helpful when working with nodes. Go to Geometry, Right, Set Position and place the node after the second one. These three nodes are exactly the steps on our checklist. Now let's feed information to the Set Position node. To read the position of each vertex, go to Geometry, Read, Position and place the node somewhere close to the position node. Don't connect it just yet. We need a random number to add to the position of the vertices, so shift A, Utilities, Random Value. Now it's a good point to talk about the colors. Each connector color specifies the type of information that they can be connected to. Turquoise connectors are associated with geometry, so shapes and meshes of an object. Blue connectors are associated to vectors, while gray ones are associated to float numbers. The words vector and float sound intimidating, but they really aren't. A float number is just a number, any number, 1, 7, 5 million, 0 0.003, minus 8, all of those are floats. They are called floats because a decimal point can float into any position, as opposed to, for example, an integer, which cannot have decimal. Decimals. A vector is just a collection of three floats, and they're important because we're working on 3D space. To know where a vertex is, you need to know the x, y, and z values of its position. You'll see that the position node outputs a vector, which makes sense as it represents the position of each vertex in the mesh. But random value outputs a float by default. You can change that by clicking on the drop-down box and selecting vector. Since we only want to modify the height, we'll zero both x and y max values. Now we have two vectors that we can add to each other. So let's add a vector math node, shift A, utilities, vector, vector math. It defaults to add, which is the one we need, but there are other operations it can perform. Connect the position and random value nodes to the inputs of the add node. Then connect the output of the math node to the position connector of the set position node. You can modify the max z value and the random value node to get the result you want. Note that we've done all of this non-destructively. If you tab into edit mode, you'll see the original plane. We've just added geometry to it. Go to the modifier properties tab and you'll 
you'll see that this geometry node is a modifier and it works like any other modifier. We can turn it off and on or we can even remove it. We could apply it to a different object if we wanted to. Now back to our field. Since we've done everything non-destructively, we can change the subdivision level. If we increase the level, it starts to look quite awful and not like a mountainous landscape. This means that a random value is not working for this objective. Let's change it to a noise texture. Delete the random value node by selecting it and pressing X. Now shift A texture noise texture. Note that the factor output is gray, meaning it's a float, not a vector. If we connect a float output to a vector input, it will take it as the vector as all three dimensions with the same value. Try connecting the texture directly to the add node and see what happens. You'll see that it's not only affecting the height of each vertex, but all directions. Since we want to leave the X and Y directions without change, we need to convert the noise texture output to a vector with X and Y being 0 and z being the node's output. We can create such vector with utilities vector combine x, y, z. Leave x and y as 0 and connect the factor output from the noise texture to the z. Now if we change the resolution of the mesh, it looks smoother. The subdivide mesh node goes up to 6 if you click and drag or click on the arrow, but you can click on the number and type any number you want. Remember it subdivides exponentially, so don't go to numbers higher than 8 or 10 unless you know that your computer can handle it. Also, save often. Now, the mountains should probably be higher. This looks more like water, so let's fix that. There are a few ways to do this. The easiest one is to multiply the noise texture output by a number. So shift A, utilities, math, math and place it between the noise texture and combine XYZ nodes. Change add to multiply. Change the value to whatever you like. You'll note that the whole mesh goes up a bit. We're not gonna fix that now, but give it a try with what you've learned so far if you like. Now we've created the mountainous region non-destructively, so we can always go back and change any setting that we want at any point. Let's add the trees. Instances spawn on elements called points. And by default, Blender will take vertices as points. So let's try that. Shift A, instances, instance and points, and place it after the set position node. Everything disappears, as Blender thinks that you only need the points of the geometry, but don't need the original geometry anymore. Go to geometry, joint geometry, and put this node after the instance and points. Note that the input connector is different. It accepts multiple geometries. So connect the set position output also to the joint geometry node. Now we need to tell Blender what object to instance. The easiest way is just dragging the tree from our scene collection to the geometry nodes window. This will create an object info node with the tree already selected. Connect the geometry output to instance. Change the scale as necessary by dragging through all the fields to change all simultaneously. Now the whole field is covered by trees. This might work for some applications, but we want to add randomness here. Go to point, distribute points and faces and place it before the instance on points node. Change random to Poisson disk. Change the distance min to a number that prevents trees from overlapping each other and change the density max to your liking. You can change C to get a new random layout. I'll just change the materials of the field and we're done. If you look at the node tree now, it looks quite large but we did it just step by step and that is the process. Now it's your turn. Try randomizing the size of the trees. That's it for today. Drop a like, comment and subscribe if you like this video. See you in the next one and happy blending.